Hey, greetings everyone, Chris here. I'm uh, here to give my weekly COVID update from Wasilla, Alaska. So it's been a it's 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 been a notice. Uh, there's been a noticeable change this week uh, for issues related to COVID. It, it feels like we're kind of over the peak. Um, so I know when I when we track cases, I think Alaska got 339 active cases. Uh, nine people have died today, which I think was the same that I reported last week. So we haven't had any new deaths this week. The number of new cases daily uh, are smaller. So I don't know if uh, it seems like the things that have been done earlier on to contain and flatten the curve are working. So that's positive. I did go out to a grocery store last uh, last week and I noticed that was the first time that it, 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 I really noticed a lot of masks. And so there was a lot of people wearing face masks. Uh, I felt bad because I wasn't wearing one on the first trip because I wasn't aware that it was that we're actually there. So I, I, I can remember, I think there was at least, it seemed 40 to 50% of the people in the store were wearing face masks. I had to go back a second time and I was wearing a face mask the second time, which felt odd, felt very uncomfortable and made me, and I didn't have a particularly good one. I mean, it is one of the, it's rated, but it wasn't comfortable. So I thought, man, this would be hard to wear all day. Uh, but so that was a noticeable thing. And that was at the Wasilla store here in Alaska. So it's, uh, it's affecting us. Probably the, the most noteworthy thing was what happened in the oil markets this week, kind of as a, res, a result of COVID's impact on travel restrictions and just people hunkering in if, you know and I saw a chart earlier this week I was looking at some some website online and it showed the number of uh, the number of individual travelers that ESA the TSA processes at their airport security checks and compared to 2019 and then this year and it was just remarkable so uh, when you're looking at TSA data and the people that are being processed through security checks you can see that significantly lower volume of travelers um, and that's just one uh, that's one indicator for what could be happening to fuel what is happening to fuel and so the demand for fuel has just collapsed um, but the problem is the production itself has not stopped and so you, in the in the marketplace oil has just started to back up and, and storage uh, storage facilities are at capacity which means there's nowhere else to store oil which has created this uh, a bizarre situation with the price of oil where it hit negative values this week which you can't even wrap your head around how about a barrel oil oil can have a negative price but we're going to look quickly at uh, department of labor's website uh, there is there's a record for the day that it went negative and i just want to to point that out definitely one for the record books I can tell you uh, personally, I'm still in hunker down mode. As is my family, I think we're all kind of tired of hunkering down. Um, that's yeah. So I'm ready, ready for some normalcy. And I can tell you, at, at work, my organization is starting to. We're developing the ease in plan. So what does easing look like, right? As we start to transition to where we can be, begin to work from our offices, um, how do we do that, right? What are some of the costs going to be? What are the options? Um, and it's pretty clear and apparent that the landscape for the future of work, there's a, high, uh, there's a probability, definitely a possibility, but a probability that life will be different um, and organizations may choose to have more people work from home uh, for a number of different reasons. And there's a cost associated with that. So when we're planning within an organization, we're saying, okay, well, what are these costs going to be as we start to ease in? Um, and so that's yeah and it's it's exciting actually it's exciting to be part of a, a planning process for easing back into work so that's some positive news on the corona virus front um, otherwise yeah it's turning into spring so it's hard to feel bad when the days are longer and the weather's getting warmer on my daily walks with my dog i don't have to wear so many layers of clothes now um, he is taking longer to smell all the smells that are starting to uh, be, um, become available to him as the everything thaws so that's a little a mild irritant I mean I just have to wait around for him longer as he's smelling things but uh, um, I don't have any problem with that it's good to be outside uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that some of that oil data uh, and we'll, we'll show you what we're talking about okay so this is uh, this is what we're talking about here on screen you can see for the last 
last couple of weeks, I mean, we've definitely been, uh, oil's getting, getting hammered as supplies built up. And then it was, uh, yeah, sure enough, it was Monday when we saw a price for a, a barrel of Alaska North Slope crude drop into negative values, um, which is uh, kind of unprecedented. You can see West Texas dropped down to 30, negative 37. Um, so uh, clearly uh, uncharted waters. Um, very thankful that it's back in the positive, but you know, if, if we were, if somebody a year ago was to say price of oil was going to be at just over ten dollars a barrel, we would have, uh, they would have laughed, and if they, if they believed that it was serious, they would have cried. So these are horrible numbers for us to be seeing as a state. But you know, on the positive, and it's on the positive, it's not negative. All right, so we're thankful for that. So aside from the price of oil, the economy is, uh, there's definitely political pressure to turn parts of the economy back on. So certain, the governor has eased uh, restrictions on certain businesses being open. So I think um, fat, uh, food restaurants have been allowed to deliver wine and, wine and alcohol or beer. Um, and in fact, I think some restaurants can even open. Uh, barbershops, tattoo parlors, some of these types of uh, businesses have and I think even dental offices, some, uh, some medical types of businesses are now doing business. They're probably doing it much more safely and with an eye towards, uh, you know, keeping things clean, germ-free, wearing face masks, all of that. So there's, we could definitely see pressure to, to get the economy back going. I think it is definitely just, it's a matter of, uh, you know, the balance of, of making sure that we're not doing things that are going to in, in increase the infection rate, uh, transmission rate, but also aren't killing the economy. Uh, so I am interested to see what, uh, what, what happens with the housing market um, as, we, as we get data that's coming in for April and for May, because as I'm doing my walks and I'm seeing houses for sale, it just, you know, it's, it's obvious that that part of the economy has to be just crushed as people don't want to at least it is, I assume people aren't shopping for houses. They're certainly not physically going into places and, and shopping. Um, and I have read some, I've had, I've read different points of view from different markets that some markets are red hot where people are buying property site unseen. Um, but those, you know, I don't know a lot of details other than perhaps those might be very high price type of uh, markets where there's incredible competition to even to get any type of house at a reasonable price. So anyway, uh, more, to, more to come. I'll report on that in future weeks of uh, this COVID update. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.